Good evening everyone. Uh, today we're going to continue our adventures in Haskell with uh, a look at parsing to abstract syntax trees. To do this we're going to take a step back from our calculator project and we're going to look at a simple imperative language and parsing that and generating some sort of parse tree from that and then maybe next time we'll look at writing an interpreter for that parse tree just so that we can go from uh, input to execution all in one program. Uh, we're going to be using a language which I will call BF from now on, uh, just because it's a slightly rude name, and it's a variant of a, a sort of a, a primitive language called PTIC TIC. And uh, I will put links to both the PTIC TIC Wikipedia page and the BF Wikipedia page in the description below. So, most importantly about uh, BF, it only has eight input characters that mean anything. It uh, also has uh, an array or um, you know a, a tape. Now standard BF has 30,000 entry tapes but there's no actual rule that says that we have to do that but uh, for now we're just going to worry about parsing the commands into an, an abstract syntax tree. So we've got six commands which are the increment decrement data pointer, increment decrement value output and input and then we have two extra characters to do with looping so let's make an abstract syntax tree for that step one make a project and off we go so we're going to import text.parsec and we're going to import text.parsec.string which gets us our basic parsers. We're going to define a data type for a BF instruction which will be either an increment, let's actually let's say go back, go forward, increment, decrement, input, output, <clears throat> what else can we do? We can loop over a list of instructions and let's derive show so that we can see what we've done at the end of this. Uh, overall our main function, let's write that in now, is going to uh, read a file in. So let's say uh, content is read file. Let's go with hello.bf and I will copy in. I have that conveniently to hand. Let me just show you that. This is an example. And as you can see, um, any character that isn't one of the command characters is basically a comment. So we're going to need to be able to cope with comments and that means white space as well. Um, but let's build this parser up from primitive parsing so that we can get somewhere a little bit further. Let's just finish up with our parser. We're going to say uh, case parse. Um, let's have a parse instructions of hello.bf and there's the content and again we're either going to get an exception or we're going to get an instruction stream well either way we're just going to print them out for now and let's write parse instructions is going to be a parse of bf instruction Right, so we have a very simple structure. Let's uh, go about writing something to parse each of the uh, six basic instructions. So if we have parse back, there's going to be a parser that produces an instruction. In fact, I can say that parse forward, parse increment, parse decrement, parse input, and parse output. Now, can I do this conveniently like that? Will all be B 
BF instruction parsers. So parse back is going to be char left goes to return go back. Parse forward will be char right goes to return go forward. This is becoming fairly obvious. In fact, now that we we can see three of these things. Let's think again, and we're going to go parse gen is a char goes to parser bf instruction, and then we can say parse back parse gen of x is char x goes to return y. And then parse back will become parse gen of that. And parse forward, parse gen. And we're getting somewhere further. Um, in fact, uh, we're doing. If things were a little bit more complex than this, then we might start actually generating these in a tabular fashion. Now, increm imp uh, dot is output, comma is input. So there are all of our parsers. And the complaint is basically defined but not used because we've not done anything with it yet. Um, the only thing that we haven't done now, now is parsing the loops. So let's just write that very quickly. Parse loop, which again is going to be a BF instruction. So let's just drop it in here. Parse loop do. We need our open loop. We need to parse any number of instructions. So let's go instance comes from parse instructions. Since that's going to parse a list of instructions for us, we're going to get a close and then we're going to return that instruction stream. Could not much. Ah, it's a bug actually. Parse loop is not a parser of BF instruction. Parse loop is a parser of list of BF instruction. So we're getting there. The final thing that we need to do is work out how we're going to parse instructions. Well, parsing instructions strikes me as an opportunity to map over parse one instruction and parse instruction is oh no you see I've got that wrong parse loop really should be one of those because we don't return that we're going to return that it's looking good uh, comma there we go so parse instruction okay in a basic sense it's going to be parse back or parse forward, or parse increment, or parse decrement, or parse input, or parse output, or parse loop. And that should be good enough for a real instruction stream. Um, what's MapM complaining about now? Could not match parse a list of BF instruction with actual type do 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 um, oh we've got nothing to map it over do we parsing instructions so uh, what are we going to do instead of parse instruction we're going to use the many combinator that works that's better right so nominally we now have a, at least as far as Emacs knows a functional parser 
Um, unfortunately, that's not going to cover any of those comment characters that we have. So if we add a parse comment, which is going to be a parser that produces nothing, and parse comment is simply going to be um, many, none of, left, right, plus, minus, dot, comma, brackets. Define, not use, parse, comment. So we now have a comment parser. Um, we need somewhere to do that. I suggest we do it before and after every instruction because I'm feeling quite lazy. So the instruction that we're getting is going to be from there. We're going to parse another comment and we're going to return the instruction. I think that's going to do it because parse instructions is going to parse a comment and then so a comment which could be zero or more non-operational characters, then a command, then it's going to parse more commentary which will be again zero or more of anything but a command character. Uh, so all in all that should cover everything because it should mean that these chars here all behave properly. Let's give it a go and see what happens. Okay well I've got a wall of text here um, I'm just going to feed it a slightly simpler program briefly. So let's pull open the hello file. Let's delete everything but the first 10 increments. Save that and run it. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 increments. That does seem to be doing the right thing. So let's restore that. Let's um, maybe put uh, take all of that away again and put a simple loop in there that just decrements and we should see a loop with decrement on the end. So we stand a chance that that is actually parsing our entire program for us. Next time we're going to look at building an execution engine to actually run this command so hopefully I will see you then. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, comment, follow me on Twitter, all the usual things and I will see you next time. Bye bye.